Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I did the Jellyfish Nebula and I've had so many comments and questions about the color that I used for that image that I thought I would do a video to show you exactly what I did to start with. And it also happens to be a great tutorial for how to use linear fit. So let's get started. I have our stack masters and I've done a dynamic crop and also a screen stretch of each one so we can see what they look like. We've got our sulfur, we've got our oxygen 3 which doesn't have a whole lot of data and we've also got our hydrogen alpha. I did want to point out that on the oxygen 3 we do have a little bit of vignetting from the moon and we'll get rid of that later on in the process. So normally what I would do here is I would open up statistics and then I would load up each one of these. We'll start with the hydrogen alpha and we'll find the median value. And what we're looking for is the stacked master with the lowest median value. So for the hydrogen alpha, we have 1.613. For oxygen, we have 1.609, and for sulfur, we have 1.610. So we know that the oxygen has the lowest median value, and that's what we're going to use for our reference image in linear fit. So normally, we would take our reference image, which is oxygen in our case, and then we would just apply this to the hydrogen alpha and then also to the sulfur. Now you'll notice that your image looks like it's changed and what you need to do is turn off the screen stretch and then turn it back on. What we're doing with this linear fit, I'm going to apply that to sulfur, is that we're trying to normalize the backgrounds. What I would do normally if I wasn't trying to use this to get some different color is to put them together and then run a dynamic background extraction. So I would normally come to open up the LRGB combination if I'm doing this just a plain SHO and I would apply the sulfur to red, the hydrogen to green and the oxygen to blue. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick so that we can get a look and see what we're working with. I'm just going to apply that. And then we'll do a screen stretch on that. And this is what our image looks like. And you can tell that it's shifted more to the oxygen rather than um, the hydrogen alpha or the sulfur based on the blue around the vignetting from the oxygen that we looked at earlier. So let's move some of this to the side. And by doing a background neutralization and a color calibration, we'll just re-screen stretch that and then apply our color calibration. You'll notice that the image changes to more of a bring out more of that hydrogen alpha. You'll also notice that um, the sulfur was permanent here. And in order to get rid of all these gradients, we run a dynamic background extraction. I use a tolerance of two and a shadow relaxation of six. And then we can, I generate some pretty big sample points. And what we'll do is, is just remove these from over the nebula. All right, now what we'll do is we'll just pull this off into its own little instance down here in case we want to use it again. And we're going to use division, discard the background model, replace the target image, and apply it. We're going to close this and redo our screen stretch. And what you'll notice is because we did the color calibration, um, it looks a lot different than my final image did in my video. And we get a lot more of the hydrogen alpha coming out and a lot less of the oxygen showing throughout. 
the actual nebulosity here. I could still make it out because I know where it is, but it doesn't just come out to your eye. So that's the way that you would normally use the linear fit tool. Now let me go over how I use the linear fit tool to get that particular color that you saw in my jellyfish nebula. So I've reset all the images back to the way they were when we first started, uh, before I applied the linear fit and the dynamic background extraction. And I'm going to show you how I actually got the, the color that I did, how I got more of this oxygen, the blue to come out in my final image from my last video. And I didn't increase anything with the oxygen, I just used the linear fit and did not do the color calibration at the end. So we had our LRGB combination. And instead of actually doing uh, a dynamic background extraction on each of these beforehand, we're just going to reapply our oxygen to these uh, at the beginning. So we're going to take our reference image of oxygen and apply it to the sulfur, and then we're going to apply it to the hydrogen alpha. Now that we have these applied, we're going to go ahead and run our LRGB combination again. And this time, once we get our image, we will still run our dynamic background extraction in order to get rid of these gradients. We'll go ahead and close this and do a screen stretch again. But here you notice that you can see a lot more of the blue. It's skewed more towards that oxygen data and this is what I finally used. Now I did do a background neutralization, but the trick here basically is just not to do the color calibration because you want it skewed more towards the blue to start with. You can fix the gradients later afterward, after it's stretched, but you won't lose this. Now I'll run a star exterminator on this in the linear form and pull out our star field, you'll notice that our star field is loaded with blue stars. Um, you could, in essence, clone everything and get some better looking stars, which is what I did, and then use that star field in place of this blue star field. Or you could just color correct the blue star field after you've extracted it. Either way works just fine. So this is what it looks like with more skewed towards the oxygen. Well, what would happen if we did a linear fit with our reference image as sulfur? What would we? What would it look like then? Well, let's find out. Let's minimize this, and we'll just place it up here. And then we'll undo the linear fit from our other two images. And yeah, they'll look funny when you do this, but if you do a um, re-screen stretch it, They'll, they'll go back to normal like they were before, as you can see. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to change our reference image to sulfur. Say OK, and then we'll apply our sulfur reference image to the hydrogen alpha stack and then to the oxygen stack. Now that that's completed, we will combine, use our LRGB combination again. Everything's the same. I'm just going to produce another new image, but this time it should be skewed more towards the, the sulfur. And you'll notice that instead of the blue that you had down here in the last one, that it, it's a lot more pinkish and, and red. So we'll go ahead and apply our dynamic background extraction. We'll re-screen stretch and we'll do um, a background neutralization, but not a color calibration. And here is what our image looks like, skewed more towards the sulfur. And you'll see a lot more orange in here and a deeper uh, red or magenta mixed in with the orange, but a lot less blue. Um, I'll show you what the blue looks like again, and you can see there's a pretty big difference here. Let me minimize this stuff and 
to get it out of the way so we can do some comparisons. And so basically, if you were to stretch from here, you're going to get a much different color tone in your images moving forward after the fact. Now, none of these are actually color calibrated. So if you were to go in and look at the statistics of these, you'll notice that the, the colors are off. Um, it, so you might have some issues moving forward with your curves or after you've stretched it um, with some other processes that you might do to it, especially if you were to take it in the Photoshop. Uh, but for the most part, this is how you could get um, a much different look to the nebulosity. Um, you'll notice in here, you've got more of a pink and orange and then here you've got more of a, a blue and gold. And looking at our main image that's been um, color calibrated, and also I would like to mention that if you were to do the hydrogen, uh, if you were to use hydrogen as your reference image in the linear fit, you would get something very similar, if not almost identical to this right here that we're looking at, which is the color calibrated. Now, if you decide to color calibrate before you um, go ahead and stretch these, you'll notice that all of these will look almost identical. Um, not quite identical because we did use a different reference image for our linear fit, but they'll be very close. And to prove that, I'll just go ahead and apply these. And you'll notice that they look almost all identical. Um, I'm going to do a re-screen stretch this. And I'll apply this one to the oxygen one that we had. And I'll do a rescreen stretch on this one. Let me move this out of the way so we can see. You notice that these are almost perfectly identical. Um, you can still see that same gradient. It's almost exact down in the corners. If we zoom in to the nebulosity, it should look very similar as it does. Um, I do notice there, no, there's still the same amount of oxygen. So this is the image, the way it should look color calibrated. And if I went ahead and stretched this, I would have a really hard time getting the oxygen to show up through here because it had a lot less data and so I'll undo this color calibration, screen stretch this, and I just like this better. And maybe it's just for this particular image, and you might like the way that the sulfur looks better, and on particular images I might like that as well. Now this isn't the only way that you can get these colors to come out. There's lots of different ways, but this is the way that I used in order to get my final image uh, or my beginning image in order to get the final image of, of my Jellyfish Nebula. Well, I hope that was helpful. If so, please go ahead and leave a like. And if you really want to learn about how to put stars back into your images, you need to watch this video right here.